Okay. Good, good to be in God's house. Amen. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer tonight as we begin. Father, we certainly thank you for a beautiful day, Lord. And we thank you now that we can come into your house, God, and, and just be in one accord and have a great time in you, Father, and that you would just share with us through song and through ministry tonight. For we surely love you and we praise your name. Thank you for allowing us to be here. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord. It's certainly good to be a part of the story tonight, isn't it? Um, just as I was, I was looking at my notes, and I have a a new a new Bible app I've been using, and it's amazing how and, and Bible apps and all kind of apps do all kinds of things, don't they? Any day or time of day or night, but um. It says that um, a lot of things, but you know today's scripture that that I that I have and and, and I and I share it with with a lot of people and it's not about me it's about God and. But it says, as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. In the end, he will stand upon the earth. And you know, there's so many, there's so much knowledge in God's word. There's so many things that touch our life every minute of the day. Even when, when we're asleep at night. You know, and we, and we go to bed and we say our prayers and we ask the Lord to watch over us and our children and our families and, and so forth, you know, but... Um, tonight we want to want to go to prayer, and I want to share with you a few of the prayer needs on our hearts tonight. Uh, remember, Denton Dial, uh, also Mia Mullis. Mia's doing better, but continue to pray for her. Uh, Debbie Hendricks, uh, continue to pray for her. Leland Cox, he's in rehab. Is that right, Brother Jimmy? So uh, pray for him, Miss Pansy. Uh, Terry Ann Kirkland, uh, been sick for a few days, so pray for her and. And, and Bill and Becca, Karen Brookshire in ICU, and uh, also Brother Danny will be having a, a heart procedure in the morning in Jacksonville. And um, I'd like for Brother, Brother Jimmy and, and Richard and some that will to come and let's anoint Brother Danny and pray for him because, you know, there's no, there's no easy or no light procedure that we have. No light surgery that we go through. It's all just to the point of the other. But especially when we're dealing with the heart. And Brother Danny explained it to me, but I can't <coughs> explain it to you the right way. But I know it's serious. So um, as we as we lay hands upon Brother Danny tonight, I'd ask that you would lend your faith toward us and help us pray for him.
Let's give God a hand of glory. Amen. Uh, got a couple of quick announcements for you. Um, there will be no Board of Stewards meeting tonight. We'll meet next month and take care of some things. And um, But be much in prayer for, for everything that's going on in our church. Also, um, next Sunday night, we will, um, in the evening service, we will elect or nominate a, a preacher search committee. Um, and this takes a lot of prayer. And we certainly want God to be the leader in this committee. So I encourage you this week, the rest of the week, you know, God says, as I told you before, some things come through much prayer and fasting. So that's up to you and God. But I would encourage you to be in prayer for this committee. Because this is a, um, a serious spiritual thing that we want to do the right thing. We don't want what we want. We want what God wants. Amen. We want God's will in our church family. And uh, we're going to put other things behind us. We're going to rebuke Satan in all shapes and forms he tried to come. And he has no power. And so many times we can be deceived by him. But you've got to open your eyes. God will open our eyes. If we read and study God's word and pray and fast, you'll see a difference. I promise you. So tonight Chris is going to come. And um, his youth going to be with him. They're going to do some things here tonight and so we're looking forward to it so just um pray for chris as he comes now thank you oh yeah oh uh, I, I had that miss nolan i uh, thank you we know by now mr johnny todd passed away um, Sunday night and the service was today um, they had a small service and I respect that that was their plans and their wishes so continue to pray for his family also I appreciate it Miss Nona thank you well good evening welcome you are now my youth group tonight you can be anywhere from sixth grade on up to Misty's. Where's Misty at? Where, where's she at? You ain't sitting where you're supposed to be sitting. No, I just wanted to, um, first and foremost, um, thank Jimmy Brantley. I called him last week. This is something I've had. You know, I told Steph a, a few weeks, a few months, but actually this kind of goes back about almost eight years for me. Uh, just something that God has been impressing upon me. And uh, I thank Jimmy Brantley for getting me worked in. I think it was Jimmy Johnson's time to speak. Thank you for letting me come in your spot. I appreciate you. I meant to tell you Sunday, and I just, I, I just with everything going on, I forgot. But uh, anyway, it's good to be here tonight. Hang on. Technology's good until it's not. There. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm going to come talk to you about time. What is time? How do we define it? Now, I know we can go along and say, well, time's a noun. What time is it? What does the time on the wall say? It's a verb. You know, us athletes, well, former athletes, used to get timed in the 40 yard dash. You know, I want you to time this person. But we kind of break it down in, into what, what do we normally know? Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, we can go on down to years, eons. Can anyone in here describe to me what a coon's age is? I've grown up in the South. I'm using my proper Southern English. I grown up in the South. I've heard coons age all my life. No one here can explain that? Do they age slow or something? Don't know. I've always, every once in a blue moon, we know what a blue moon, it happens, what, every, you know, when you have two full moons in a month, is that what it was? But, uh, but, but a coons age, oh my goodness, I, I, can't, I can't break that one down. 
So anyway, as I do with youth, sometimes we play a game. I would say, grab a chair, circle up, let's play, let, do you love your neighbor? Um, looking around, I don't think we need to do that tonight. Someone might break a hip. Um, and it, now that game can get vindictive too, okay? Pretty vindictive. Or we could, um, we could all lay down between the pews and play Battleship. You've not had fun until you played Battleship. Or we can stand in a circle and play Bunny Bunny. Who wants to play Bunny Bunny? Coochie, coochie, coochie. There you go. Okay. No, our game is going to be a guessing game. I'm going to read some quotes on time by semi-famous people. If you know who said the quote, raise your hand. Let's see how smart you are. All right. All right, here we go. Number one. The two most important powerful warriors are patience and time. It's a big, thick book called War and Peace. Who wrote it? Tolstoy. Tolstoy wrote it. Wrote it. Okay. Yeah, he wrote it. Time is money. Who said that? In, time is money. No, it wasn't Donald Trump. He discovered electricity. Ben Franklin, throw your hand up, speak out, all right? You're in youth group, trust me, they talk over me all the time. All right, better three hours too soon than a minute too late. And let me give you a hint, it wasn't Tish Harris that said that. <laughs> better three hours too soon than a minute too late, to be or not to be. William Shakespeare, all right, come on, catch up with me, can't hear you. Lost time is never found again. We just mentioned this guy. Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. There you go. All right, listen closely. I thought this was very profound. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And then once you've lost it, you can never get it back. Any guess? I didn't know that I had to look this guy up. Harvey McKay, he's a famous businessman and author. He wrote many books on business. Have you heard of him? Oh, you were just fixing to say that. All right. The future is uncertain, but the end is always near. What famous 60s rock singer said that? And it's not Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> John Lennon? Eh. Riders on the storm. <laughs> Jim Morrison of the Doors said that. I found that very interesting. All right. Time flies over us, but leaves its shadow behind. He was the author of the Scarlet Letter. Nathaniel Hawth, who said that? Nathaniel Hawthorne, coming from a teacher back there. If you love life, don't waste time, for time is what life is made up of. Very famous martial artist. Bruce Lee, who said that? Ms. Nona, I think she's got all, her, all his movies. Uh, time is what we want the most, but what we use the worst. A Quaker. William Penn. William Penn, very good. Okay, now, I, I'm, I'm kind of picking fun at this one. Time spent with cats is never wasted. Candy Hatcher, wrong. It's, <laughs> if I'm reading it right, it says Danny Callahan. <laughs> no. so, some lady named Colette. I don't, I don't know. Why, I'm saving this one for last. Your time is limited, but don't waste it spending 
don't spend it living someone else's life. He made these. Steve Jobs. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Lord of the Rings. J.R.R. Tolkien. All right, now, some of, some of you may get this one. We must use time as a tool, not as a crutch. Famous 60s president. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, very good. Who said that? There you go. All right, let's get to this. All right. We must use time wisely and forever realize that the time is always ripe to do the right thing. Civil rights leader, but not here in America. Nelson Mandela. Time is an illusion. Of, of, <laughs> No, but he was a smart man with crazy hair, Albert Einstein. And then my most favorite one out of this list, there is never enough time to do all the nothing you want. Now, Stephanie should get this one because we like his cartoon. Bill Watterson, the author of Calvin and Hobbes. All right, now, there were some famous quotes. Now, I'm about to share with you a story. Oh, gosh. Richard, I got 45 minutes. Okay. 45 to an hour. Okay, all right. Go ahead and take this thing off then. I'm going to share a story with you because it's, it's a memory of mine. It is a true story. Uh... And it deals with time, but in a different way. As many of you know, I grew I growed up, I'm gonna use my southern English, I growed up in social circle. How many of you been to social circle or been through it or even know where it's at? <laughs> All right, we got a few. We got a few. If you go to Madison, Georgia, take a left and go about 12, 15 miles. We were at the time back in this this took place in 86 i was 16 years old um anyway my town i'm thankful for where i grew up i miss my town and at the time our school was the second smallest single a school in the state we had four classifications single a double a triple a and quad a we were single a and we were at the bottom of the barrel we were that small. My graduating class had 50. All right. Probably more than the magnet school, but we were small, okay? Now, most of us grew up around one another. We grew up playing baseball. We didn't have a rec program until 79. I was in fourth grade. Uh, but most of us were friends. We hung out. We played ball together. We were in school together. It's bad when you have your high school and your middle school together. Um, we were that small. Okay. Now, as many of you know, I am a football fanatic. I'm a SEC football fanatic. I'm a Georgia Bulldog fanatic. All right. I, I get kind of riled up. I get kind of riled up. Okay. But here, I'm a social circle redskin. We were the redskins. And so, it was coming into my junior year, 16 years old. Um, we probably had about 35, 36 people on the team. I mean, we were that small. But to us, you know, that was, that was a pretty good sized squad. Because I remember the first winning season, or put it this way, the first non-losing season Social Circle ever had only had 21. Iron Man football. Because you know all them players ain't starting. So a lot of people, we were used to playing both, both sides of the ball both ways. But this year, particularly year, I only played offense 
thankful. I loved offense. I loved being on the offensive line. Now you say, well, you got the size for offensive line. Yeah, I do now. You need to see a picture of me when I was 16. I turned sideways, I was invisible, but I was every bit of 6'2". I'm down to about six and, a half, six and a half foot right now, you know, down to about six and one half inch. Good old father time and gravity, okay? But anyway, it was best put by Herschel Walker when he was doing his SEC interview. We weren't the best team, but we played together as a unit. Everyone knew everyone on the team. We knew each other's job, especially on the offensive line. If our center went down, I could back up the center. If the guard went down, whoever was the backup center could play guard. We knew everyone's position. This particular year, we were doing pretty good. Now this is back in the age, how many of you know Buford High School? The University of Buford? Yeah, they were seeing a lay. Yeah, they were single A. They, they're not like 6A right now. We got like seven classifications or whatever. But they were single A. Decula High School was single A. They, they are now 6A. But with, we were some of the smaller schools. And we had to play Buford every year. We had to play Jackson County. We had to play Monticello. Don't get me started on Monticello. <laughs> Every time we, it seems like every game we played Monticello was in Monticello and it always rained when we played Monticello, Georgia. Always rained. But this particular year, we're doing pretty good. We only lost to Buford. They blanked us. They beat us like seven to nothing, 13 to nothing. And then the next game was Monticello and we didn't score a touchdown, but we beat them. Two to nothing on a safety. Uh, we played in the slop that, that night. I mean, couldn't no one hold on to the ball, couldn't no one tackle anyone, but it was, it was a knockdown drag out. We scored on a safety and won. So here we are, we're sitting here eight and one. The coach comes in, come Monday, we're finna do film study, and then uh, what we used to call Bloody Monday, which was Bloody Monday, Bloody Tuesday, was two of our long full pad practices. And so the coach comes in before we hit, because we're fitting to play Oglethorpe County. Now, Oglethorpe County was double A. They moved down to single A. We didn't know nothing about this team. We'd never played Oglethorpe County. And he says, if we beat Oglethorpe County, you will be the first team in social circle history to go to the football playoff. I'm like, oh, wow. Normally, we play 10 games, and we're pumping up basketballs. I mean, we're straight into basketball season. We didn't know nothing about football playoffs. We didn't. So anyway, we had a good week of practice. And then Friday, we traveled to Lexington, Georgia, where the high school was. And these boys come out of the tunnel. The story David and Goliath mean anything to you? Because here we were, we were a bunch of ragtag, scrawny fellas. Probably our heaviest guy was Todd Duncan. He was every bit of 6'4", maybe 230, 240. That was the biggest guy we had. And the names I'm telling you are true names. I'm not making anything up. And Todd was being recruited by MTSU, which he would later go and play for MTSU. And then, uh, anyway, these boys come out, they were humongous. Looked like they just come, walked off the farm, just big, stout boys. And we got in a dog fight with them. And we're going into the fourth quarter. It's tied seven to seven. I can't remember who drew first blood, who scored first, who scored last. But it, it's getting late in the fourth quarter. It's cold. It's not raining, thank the Lord, but it was cold. It's November, and they're driving the ball. They're driving it down our throat. And anyway, we get, they, they get within our 5, 10-yard line, and they scored. 
they scored. It's 13 to 7. And so I think we called one of our, we had like two timeouts. We called one, you know, we got to block the field goal. We got to block the extra point. And we broke that huddle. And I went back to the sideline. I wasn't on that unit. David Morgan. David Morgan was probably five foot nothing. Probably weighed 130 pounds, probably about five seven to be honest with you. He had to run around the shower to get wet. He, he but he was quick. David Morgan was quick, but off the field he was he was probably one of the nicest human beings you ever want to meet. We broke that huddle. Everyone's running to line up and get ready. David Morgan kind of just hesitated, and he looked at my coach, Coach Gary Mackey. He said, Coach, they will not get the extra point. I remember that because my coach turned, the, my coach reiterated what he said. They will not get the extra point. And sure enough, ball was snapped, good snap. Kicker comes through. David Morgan, number 14, gets two fingers, fingertips on the ball. No good. Okay, we've got a shot. We get the kickoff. Now, I can't remember where we took the kickoff to. It probably 25, 30-ish yard line. Something happened. Play was stopped before we took the field. So we're sitting there, okay, Coach, Coach McCroskey, our offensive coordinator, has given us all these plays. He was like, okay, we're going to run this, on the ball, run this, on the ball, do this play. As we, we, we broke our huddle, they're still kind of huddled on the side. We're going to get in our huddle get, to call the first play. It's probably less, probably right at a minute and a half left, if that. As we are in the huddle, their PA announcer comes on the mic, loud and proud. Don't forget to come by and buy your tickets next week as the Oglethorpe County Patriots will go and take on the Commerce Tigers in the subdivision playoff. That was the moment. We all looked at one another. We said, this is our time. This is our time. So we ran a few plays. We got one timeout left. Now, we weren't a running team. Uh, we weren't a passing team. We ran the ball. The only passes we threw were little two-yard slants. Hope he can break free. We never threw anything down the field. But during the season, we had implemented, implemented two pass plays down the field. That was the third play. Red 60. That's all we needed to know. Red 60. So that hike, Don Garrett takes the ball. He drops back. Here comes my guy at me. Now, I'm the blindside tackle. You've seen the movie The Blind Side. Blind side tackles are important. I got whipped on that play because I threw a lookout block. You know what a lookout block is? When your guy beats you, you turn around to the quarterback and say, look out. <laughs> and just as my guy is getting back to Don Garrett, I heard Don Garrett grunt. And I watched the ball. I and mean, you, You've seen the movies where it's just like an eternity spiraling through the air, perfect spiral. Donald Garrett always threw a perfect spiral. And down at the other end, number 14, David Borgett caught two things. He caught the ball, and then he caught leg cramps at the same time. And he had his guy beat four or five yards. He caught the ball. So we're still in play. Time's under a minute now. It's ticking. It's rolling. Now, I think we run another play. Somehow we, we are inside their, 
15, 20 yard line. We're red zone. Call our last, well, no, we couldn't call a timeout just yet. Um, you know how the prissy little quarterbacks get to spike the ball to stop the clock? You know, just back up and spike it. 1986, you couldn't do that. You actually, the quarterback actually had to throw the ball out of bounds. You couldn't spike the ball, so we did that. Call the last timeout. And I think there is like seven seconds left on the clock. We got one more play. Coach McCroskey, our offensive coordinator, comes in. He says, here's what I want you to do. He said, Martin Bell, he said, yes, sir. He said, Don's going to fake a handoff. We're going to fake 32. And I would, then after that, after you clear the linebackers, I want you to run to the post. Martin Bell said, what's a post? <laughs> we didn't pass the ball. He didn't know what a post pattern was. It's like, okay, and literally, now, we, we, when we did our huddle, we lined up two lines, but this time we got to circle up around the coach. He literally took his finger, drew in the dirt, in the dirty grass, and said, okay, Martin, once you clear the linebackers, I want you to look up. I don't know what else was said. I was just, we, our adrenaline was going right now. Set hike. Again, what took like an eternity. Next thing I know, the ball is in the air. And there's Martin Bell on the other end, catching the ball as he falls in the end zone. 13-13. And as Larry Munson would say, the opposing side, it's bonkers over there. It's bonkers. And so number 52, Chase Cuts, comes out and kicks the extra point. It couldn't have been a more extra point. Better extra point, straight down the middle. And the social circle Redskins, not the Oglethorpe County Patriots, got to go to Commerce to play for the 8A title. You can clap if you want to. Because that's about as far as we made it. <laughs> we go to Commerce and they blanked us 14 to nothing. I say all that, I give you that story. And I relay it, I use it in devotionals. I've used it two or three times. Used it with the youth group. What is the devil coming on the PA announce over the PA system and telling you right now? You're out of time. You've lost. Just give up. Just take the ball and put it, go down on the knee. Give up. There's still time on the clock. Who are the David Morgans in here? You know, you, situ I ain't got to go over the situation we're in now. Who's going to be the David Morgan that stands up and say, God, I'll do what you want me to. Who's going to be the Martin Bell? Who's going to, you know, when the coach tells you to do something, and you don't know what that means, are you going to go out there and do it on your own? Or are you going to ask the question, God, I know what you told me. Can you show me again? The devil is always on that loudspeaker. You've got cancer. It's over. You've been caught. It's over. Your marriage is falling apart. It's over. What does God say? Which character are you? Are you giving up? Or are you still fighting for your life? Because there's still time on the clock. It's not too late. There is still time on the clock. I'm not done. All right, now I gave you some worldly quotes. I'm going to give you some biblical quotes now. And Richard, if you bear with me, I'll get you out. And, and, you, and you can get your meal while it's nice and hot. All right, or you can go get your ice cream, whatever. Biblical quotes on time. Brother Tim, how much time you got? 
Yeah. Whatever God says. Misty, how, many, how much time you got? Whatever God says. Given all the Christian answers, I swear. You're right. <laughs> there you go. Good. <laughs> Where was that an answer ago? It's all good. James 4.14 says, Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? It's just a vapor. Where, where's my vapor later? I heard her say it. It's just a vapor that appears for a little time, and then it disappears. I know you've been on the road after it rains, 100 degrees, South Georgia asphalt, and you see the, the vapor trails. It's gone like that. And why I said this, this kind of subject touched me about eight years ago. As many of you know, my mom had stage four adenocarcinoma, fancy word for lung cancer, small squamous cell lung cancer. I went up to Athens Regional on Dawson's 17th birthday. It was that bad. We were in the middle of a home modeling repro we gutted both our bathrooms. And uh, house is a mess. We're staying with brother Danny. Brenda had passed away. We were ready for 2016 to be over. We were ready for it to be over. And our, our home, our bathroom gutting, what should have taken six weeks, took seven months. And here I am in, in Athens Regional, PA and the doc come in and give us the news. And I was like, I've, I've got to get my family up here. That, that Friday, Dawson had a scrimmage, because I think his birthday was like Monday or Tuesday. I think it was on a Tuesday. He had a scrimmage in Camden County, but the next week was an off week. So I loaded up, we loaded up, and we spent what was my last weekend with Mom, because the next week, August 26th, she passed away. And I never will forget that. Because when we were leaving, I remember standing in the Georgia Power parking lot with Bill and Becca Kirkland just shaking my head saying, I'm thankful I had time. I'm thankful I had time. Because with Brenda, there was no time. She said what she said to Danny, like a vapor. She was gone. We don't know what this life is going to bring us. All right, Matthew. 24, 36, but concerning that day and hour, no one will knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but the father only. And then he goes on to say in the next chapter, chapter 25, watch therefore, you, for you know neither the day or the hour. Back to back chapters. Jesus is trying to tell us time, you, you got time, if, if you're doing this, Time is still on your clock, but you got to be ready. You got to be ready. All right, then probably one of my technology is good till it's not. One of my favorite ones, Ecclesiastes 3. I probably don't even have to read it. I'll probably have Ms. Deborah stand up and say it. For everything, there is a season and a time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to harvest, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear it down, and a time to build up, a time to cry, and a time to laugh, a time to grieve, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and then a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to turn away, a time to search, and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to, I don't like saying hate, but a time to maybe dislike, but a time to hate. It's biblical. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. A time for war and a time for peace. What season are we in right now? I can't answer. 
I can't answer. We're all in a different season. We're all in a different, in a different mindset somewhere. Um, and so you're probably asking, well, apparently I'm, I'm breathing. I'm alive. What do I do with my time on the clock? I, you might not know God's will in your life. You might not know which step to take. Well, it goes on in the last chapter of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, last two verses. And Solomon wrote, that's the whole story. Now, this is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commandments. For this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Just fear God. Respect God and his commandments. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What things? What are the desires of your heart? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, 4, I believe. Was that right? I got to go to my, my, my Bible back up over there. All right. In closing, just bear with me. It won't be as long as the football story, I hope. What don't we have time for? What we don't have time for? First thing I wrote is finger pointing. I got two verses for you, Luke 6:42. How can you think of saying, friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the beam or the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log out of your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Romans 3.23, self-explanatory, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Remember, when you go to wagging the finger, you got three more pointing back at you. Let's be careful. Guilty, okay? I'm not saying, I'm, I'm preaching to myself just as much as I'm, as much as you can hear me, okay? Guilty. What we don't have time for, name calling. I'm not going to, I'm just going to go to the positive verses, okay? I'm not even going to read what it says. But in 2 Corinthians, it's kind of the 2 Corinthians Philippians 4.8 test. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, in the last half of the verse, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have that capability. Every thought that comes through here, comes through this brain bucket, we can take a hold of, but we need to take it to the obedience of Christ. And the Philippians 4.8 test, hold that thought. You got a thought that you might want to spew out, but hold that thought, because here's what he says. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, is what you're holding, is your thought true? Is it honest? Is it just? Is it pure? Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, is it a virtue? If there be any praise, does that thought, is it lovely? Is it going to bring someone up or is it going to tear someone down? Have we, bring, have we brought that thought to the obedience of Christ? Test it. Test it. Is what, I'm, is what I'm thinking, what I'm about to spew out. Now, sometimes things are reactionary. God still forgives. Amen. God still forgives. Amen. All right. What we do not have time for unforgiveness mark 11 25 26 if you stand praying forgive for if you have something against any 
that your Father, which is also in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Has a brother or a sister come to you for forgiveness? Have you gone to someone for their forgiveness? Because if you go get forgiveness, what the other person does is it's none of your business. Like I've heard Danny say, it's none of your business. And we should be many a sermon. We should have, I forgive you, written across our forehead. Not saying you need to be a doormat. But we need to have forgiveness. Forgive them like it never even happened. Because if we don't forgive, when we go to pray, prayer's not going to get above here. Because God's going, nope, you didn't forgive your brother. Why should I forgive you? It says that. It's scriptural. These are my last two things, I promise. Before I get to it, Kettle Creek Church, stewards, deacons, thank you, pastor, thank you for having, it's been a privilege and an honor. And this is quite the biggest youth group I've had in a long time. All right, it's quite the biggest youth group I've had in a long time. It's been a pleasure and an honor. I think I've probably learned more than maybe I've taught because when you teach, when you teach teenagers, it's, it's kind of like nailing jello, jello to a tree. It, 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 like herding cats. But if you can get the one, if you can get that one, it's been all worth it. So if I've only reached one person in the past 23, 24 years. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My final two thoughts before I leave. And this is the hardest thing I've had to say. Kettle Creek Church, we need to be investing in the lives of our young people and in our children. We need to be investing. And I don't mean money. I don't mean paying a director to come in here. It's going to take more than paying someone. You've got to find someone that's going to connect in a godly way with these kids. We've got to find a, a connector. Who's it going to be? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I don't have an answer. It's kind of out of my hands now. Very last thing. This church body needs to take its elections a little bit more seriously. And this is just my opinion. Everyone that walks through that door, everyone that sits in this pew, does not always have the best intentions for this church. Everyone that you're friends with it, just because they're here and sitting in this building does not mean they have your back. Let's take it seriously. Because I've seen people serve on boards that don't support the other programs of the church. I've had deacons point blank tell me if their kid don't want to come to youth, then they ain't going to make them come to youth. point blank tell me to my face but like that's none of my business that's not going to be on me let's take it serious because my bible records said that judas attended every prayer meeting but he didn't always have jesus's back thank you let us pray Father, we thank you just for another day. I thank you for Kettle Creek Church and what it's meant to me. I thank you for the, the leaders you have put in this church to set the examples. I thank you for what you're going to do 
in the future for this church. I don't know where that is. And I'm not saying I'm not going to be here for it. But I'm saying you're in control. You established this church. Therefore, it's your church. And as we leave tonight, I, I just pray that you keep us all safe. You get us to our homes. Lord, for the ones who couldn't be here, I ask that you bless them and be with them and guide them and direct them. Be with this church and guide and direct this church. We ask for strength for its leaders in which way they should go. Lord, I just love you tonight. And I thank you. In your name we pray. Amen.